Well, next we're going to go to Susan Trimmers. Uh, Susan is one of our own, and she is going to answer the question, is there room for hunches in an industry that relies on processes and best practices? Susan Trivers has been consulting, advising, and coaching companies since 1999. She's always focused on increasing revenue in ways large and small. One large way is through orals coaching. Her book, Tinker, reveals another one of her most successful approaches to achieving great results. Susan, over to you. Thank you so much. It's so great to be here and I'm enjoying everything I've seen so far. So thank you for welcoming me in. When uh, I was talking with Peter Sherman a while ago and he said, we do these great town halls. Would you like to talk about your book? And I thought, you know, that would be wonderful. And it took me back about 15 years when I first took a Shipley course. And I remembered, you know, there was a binder and there were a lot of papers and, you know, it seemed like a lot of detail. And then a few years later, I saw their updated course and it was an even bigger binder and a lot more papers. And since then, you know, the proposal and the government business acquisition industry has gotten bigger and SMA has its own um, very powerful practices and principles and all that stuff. And so a lot of people say, well, you know, what, how can there be room for hunches in an industry that relies so much on processes and best practices. And I look back and I say, well, look at the evolution or the changes over time. I believe that most of them started when somebody had a hunch. Somebody, an expert just like you, was doing their job and somewhere along the line you said, I wonder what would happen if, if I made a little change here or a little change there, I added a bit, I took away a bit, I said something different, I did, I changed the timing, some small thing. Over time, those things add up and become the latest version of your processes and best practices. So let me define, I want to put my timer on so I don't go too long, thanks. <laughs> Let me define hunch for you. For me, a hunch is something that bubbles up from your experience. And all of you here have a lot of experience in the proposal business and government contracting. And so you are fertile ground for hunches. And let's talk for a moment about what hunches are not. Hunches are not ideas that come from the sky, out of thin air. There's no context there. So that's not a hunch. Hunches are not something that comes when a bunch of people get together in a conference room with a whiteboard and they say, hey, let's brainstorm. Again, those are not, there's no context there. And when you have someone say, now nah, let's think outside the box, that's not going to produce any hunches either. Again, because there's no context. It's not in the context of your experience and of your actual work. And the one I hate the most is let's have a list of ideas, throw them on the wall and see what sticks. Yikes, you know? <laughs> so we're looking for things that come out of your experience. And I'm, you know, willing to say that in two, three, four years, what your processes are uh, at that time are going to be somewhat different than what they are today. And that's going to be because as all of you continue to work in Me Too in this business, we have ideas about a little change here, a little change there, and they pile up and they come together and eventually the process changes. So an answer to the question, is there room for hunches in this kind of you know, process and best practices founded industry? I think obviously the answer is yes. So I wanna talk a little bit about how I came to this idea of hunches. My, uh, in the middle nineties, I owned a small restaurant in Alexandria, Virginia. It was a you know, breakfast and lunch carry out in a business district. And so just like every business owner, I'm always looking for ways to make improvements. And eventually I kept going back to our soup. We had, we made great soup and we were only selling about 65% of our soup every day. 
So I was not happy with that. And I kept trying to think about how I could get up to maybe 85%. And one day I had a hunch. And I decided to design an experiment to test that hunch. So I designed a short term, this is key, short term, simple experiment for three weeks. I collected my data, recorded everything every day. And at the end of three weeks, I had a big paper spreadsheet. I'm sure many of you remember those. And after pouring over my data, I was able to create <clears throat> what I called the perfect soup menu. As soon as we implemented the perfect soup menu, our soup sales <clears throat> grew to about 100% every day, almost every day for the three years after that that I still owned the restaurant before I sold. Every so often, one soup would seem to become less popular, so I would remove it. Add another one, I would tinker with the perfect soup menu so I could maintain my 100% of soup sales on a pretty much every day. So that experience led me to have a conversation with a lot of business owners about what is it that they imagine that they, when they ask themselves, you know, what would happen if I made this little change? And eventually I wrote my book, Tinker, which includes the story of the soup and uh, a number of other experiences I had where hunches made a difference. So let me tell you briefly, my concept of tinker is actually a three-step process or more of a three-part process. The first part is to trust it, to trust your hunches. As I say, they're bubbling up from your experience. They're not coming from, you know, the sky. So you can believe that your experiences are telling you something. And when they tell you that, it's, it's um, interested in, uh, it, it tells you that there's something there because it's from your experience. The second part is, or the second part is to test your hunch. I call it, try it. And you create a short experiment, a small experiment. Uh, I don't wanna say short because Sometimes time, it takes longer to, it takes a long time to implement the experiment, even though it's a small experiment, which I'll explain in a moment. So a simple experiment to test your hunch. And you, during the experiment, you keep notes, nothing. We're not talking about volumes of notes, just a few notes so that you can remind yourself what's happening during your test. And at the end of the test, you have to decide Internet's down. Can they see? The big changes. You're just um, trying these small things in a way that provides incremental uh, improvements to the work that you're doing. So, um, of course, a cafe is very different from proposal work. And so I, once I started working in proposals, I kept thinking, you know, well, where's the, you know, does this really work in the proposal business? I started uh, doing oral presentations a couple of years after I sold my, I sold my restaurant, I started a consulting firm, I was doing a lot of speaking and someone who did orals saw me speak and asked me if I'd be interested in doing some orals coaching. I have to say, you know, to maybe all of you be sort of a shock, but before 2000, I didn't know there was such a thing as the government contracting business or industry because I didn't have anybody, friends or family who did that. So I said, yeah, I'd like to do some orals coaching. And I started to go to different companies when they were preparing for their orals. And, you know, just like everybody, when you go to someplace new, you sort of take your time and you observe and you do what everybody else is doing so that, you know, you, you get the lay of the land. And eventually I began to see certain patterns or practices. And I started to have this feeling that there was something um, that I needed to address. So the practices, and uh, I think it's still very much a belief these days, but at that time, in the early days of orals, it was powerful, was that 
the entire orals team had to practice all the time together. And there was no time or allowance for any individual coaching. Well, I would see that in some teams, people were having, there would be one person that was having trouble uh, working in that consistent or continuous overwhelming group process. And it seemed to me that their difficulties were because they learn differently than other people, which we all know. And that if I, so I had a hunch that if I could have a short time with those people one-on-one, -on -one, an hour, two hours, whatever, I could help them overcome whatever it was that was holding them back. And that then they would go back to the team and the team would be much better. So that their difficulties were actually hurting the team and having a little private personal coaching would help the team. So that was my hunch. So then I decided my experiment would be to, to work on that, to do that over the next four or five orals that I worked on. I, you know, it was, I folded it into everything that I normally did. So I didn't make a big deal about it. Um, but I looked for the one person who might be having trouble maximizing their ability to speak in the group setting. And I decided to do a little one-on-one coaching. They'd go back and the whole orals team would be lifted up because that one person was now more, it was not just skill, it was really confidence. That was always the issue. So my experiment lasted for five projects. And that's why I say you can't really say how long it's gonna take because you know, I didn't know how, many, how much time it would take for me to get five projects that I could use this experiment on. But anyway, it was a few months. So it wasn't that I said, I'm gonna do it for every orals for the next three months. It was just, I'm gonna do it for the next five orals. So I want you to understand, you, know, you can adjust the time or the length of your experiment. After the fifth one, I evaluated what had happened and I could see that in three out of the five, there was a huge improvement in the whole presentation. And those teams did very well. Their selection boards were very complimentary. They were successful. In one case, there was no change. And in another case, it was sort of a negative impact. So the one where there was no change was actually that team really didn't have anybody that was struggling. So that you know was a little bit of feedback for me that I shouldn't apply this technique indiscriminately. I needed to evaluate who needs it. And so that's what I do now. And the one where it didn't work, um, there were really some problems that didn't have anything to do with my coaching that person. But so sometimes, you know, your best efforts are just not going to pay off. And, you know, we know that is the case in every situation. So my conclusion was that if I took away the one where there was no benefit because nobody needed it, there were four where I really worked my, I added that little coaching and three out of the four was a big difference. And so that has become a part of my practice for years. And when it comes to did I have I needed to tinker with it, I would say not really. And I want to, so that's a point I want to make that tinker is not tinkering, which is an ongoing, um, somewhat annoying process of making changes all the time. You know, you tinker once, you tinker twice. If you need more than that, then the hunch is clearly not a good hunch. And so you throw it out. I see AJ is smiling. I love it. <laughs> Okay, so we're not tinkering. We're, we're going to get our, we're going to implement and we're going to keep our eyes open if it needs a little adjustment here or there. If yes, do it. If not, don't worry about it. And if it needs a lot of adjustment, then it was not a good idea in the first place. It's so fine. So I, I want to emphasize one thing before I continue, ask you to think about an opportunity for you. Yeah, she'll come back. Yes. Yes. Finding little moments where something might be better or where you could make a little change. Okay, so it's, uh, I, I think that we respect 
all the work that's done to get to the processes and best practices you have today. But each of us, I mean, you're hired, you're, you work because you are experts. And we don't want to hide that expertise uh, or stifle that expertise, that creativity in, um, in, the, in the structure of the, of the process. Okay, so I'm not blowing anything up. I'm just encouraging you to use your head based on your experience. That's why I say it bubbles up from your experience. Okay, so here's your job right now. I want you to think for a minute, just a, a few seconds actually, to your last, maybe your current project or your last project. And try to remember when there was a time when you thought, huh, I wonder what would happen if. Now, maybe you didn't do anything because you didn't really know you could or didn't have my permission to do that, my encouragement to do that, not my permission, my encouragement to do that. But there was something where you're like, oh my God, this happens all the time. And uh, I wish I could just make a little change. And if you can think about that now, then I want you to write it down. It's a small thing, small, small. And then I want you to sort of figure out how can I test this hunch for the, on the next project or the next few projects, you need more than one sample. I mean, unless it's a total disaster, which I don't think it would be. So you need more than one sample uh, and, or you need a sample size bigger than one, I should say, and keep track of what happens when you make that little change. And after your three, four, or five project experiment, you'll know whether it's worth keeping or whether you should just let it go. So that's my, my uh, talk about Tinker, which I think is, is so underappreciated and can make such a difference to every business, every company, every client that you serve will be better off if you allow yourself to have these hunches, if you trust them, you try them by experimenting and you tinker when you need to. So thank you so much for having me here. Thank you so much. That was really thought provoking and just a, you know, tinker, what a great idea. And you gave us a lot of good things to think about and apply. So really appreciate you joining us today and sharing that. We need to get that book. We do. <laughs> we do. I think somebody might have put the uh, link in the chat. I think I saw that. So thank you. For that. Amazon, you know, but please uh, don't feel obligated. But if you want to buy it, you can buy it on Amazon. <laughs> Great. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so, so much. Yeah. Thanks again for joining us.